and it turned out that God used that or something they said or then you can speak into their lives and you can believe things. Thank you, Lord God, for this time of worship and our giving. We ask, oh God, that you bless this offering to the furthest of your kingdom. God bless those who can give and those who cannot. Lord God, we pray a double blessing for Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Ushers, you may come and collect our tithes and offerings. Praise the Lord. How many can truly say that God has been good in your life? Could you raise your hand? He surely is good. I want to talk to you about something that I read. I've been reading in the Old Testament, the book of the prophets. And um, God has just been so, so speaking to me through the word. I, I pray that you're all reading your word and that God is speaking to you as well. How many know that he speaks through his word, right? That's a huge way that he speaks to us people that say, oh, God doesn't speak to me. Read your word prayerfully, right? And, and God will speak to you. I want to talk about... Um, about eating. How many like to eat? Raise your hand if you like to eat. I like to eat. I like to eat tasty food. Tasty food. Uh, food with flavoring in it. And they say that you are what you eat. And I was actually reading an article today in a health magazine of how you actually are what you eat. How you eat and what you eat will determine how your body goes. And what you eat will impact you either positively or negatively. You know, uh, <laughs> I've been kind of thick-headed when it comes to eating. I'm trying to be a lot better, but I, I, I used to eat stuff knowing that after I eat it, I would get sick. But I loved it so much that I just bit the bullet. And just, you know, waited for it to come. There, there's something that um, back when I was younger, um, you, you don't find them so much now, but there's this Puerto Rican pastry kind of with meat in it called, we call them pastelillos. And they were like a half moon big. And in there, there was meat. And they were just fried in this greasy thing. And, you know, it was really good, but it was really greasy. And I could eat that, and I would. You used to get them in these little hole-in-the-wall places that um, today, if, uh, you know, if the state went in there, they would shut it down in a minute. But that's what made it so good. <laughs> and I would go and buy my pastelillos, and I'd eat them, and uh, give me 30 minutes, and I'd be on the floor in pain. Knowing that that would happen, I think about it, right? Not too bright, but they were good. Maybe, maybe if you tasted them, maybe <laughs> you take that risk too. But I want to talk to you about a different kind of eating. I was reading in Ezekiel chapter 3, something that really stood out to me. Let me read it to you, and then we'll talk about it. It's Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. And Ezekiel is uh, another one of those books of prophecy where God was uh, correcting his people and warning of impending judgment. So here's how it reads, starting in verse 1. And he said to me, son of man, who's he speaking about? God. And he said to me, son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll. Then go and speak to the people of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. Then he said to me, Son of man, eat this scroll I am giving you, and fill your stomach with it. So I ate it, and it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. Then he said, Son of man, go to the people of Israel and give them my messages. So here, the Lord is is in a way, I, I don't know how this all played out in real time in Ezekiel's life, but he had, uh, the Lord appeared to him. This is not the first time. This is now the second time that he appeared with his glory this way. And he's telling him to eat a scroll that, uh, that he's giving him. 
And, and, I, and Ezekiel opened up his mouth and, and, and he ate the scroll. And then he says, go and speak to my people. And, and he's talking about the experience that he had about eating the scroll. And I wanted to take some things that the Lord spoke to me from this passage of Scripture um, that's going to help us tonight because I, I want to, um, you know, I want, I want us all, every single one of us, one of the, the cries of my heart, one of uh, the reasons why this church exists, I believe, is that God wants to grow a people that really do serve him. In other words, a people who, who don't just fake like they serve him, a people who just don't come to fill space on a Sunday, but a people who are actually following Jesus Christ. Because that's a changed life. Everything else is all for show. Everything else is all for naught. But when you actually follow Jesus, then your life is transformed in a way that is hard to even describe in words. You were once one way, and then God transformed you, and you become somebody else. Not that your, you, 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 your personality changes, but your character changes. It must change. You do not stay the same. So let's see what the Lord wants to speak to us tonight. One of the things that this passage of Scripture is speaking to us is that we need to eat what Jesus gives us to eat. We need to eat what Jesus gives us to eat. In Ezekiel 3, 1 and 2, verses 1 and 2 from what I read, let me read it again. And he said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll, then go and speak to the people of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. Now remember that whatever you eat impacts you positively or negatively. Now, Eating the words of God gives you uh, life. It leads to life. When you eat something, it permeates your body. I want to talk to you about what Jesus said, because if you think this is just an Old Testament thing, let me read to you uh, something that Jesus said that is just like this from the New Testament in, in John chapter 6. Verses 53 to 57, and it says this. Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. Jesus gave Ezekiel words to eat. In the book of John chapter 6, he's telling to eat my flesh and drink my blood. What is he saying? Consume me. How many know that Jesus is the logos of God? How many know that Jesus is the word of God? How many know that this book is so powerful because it's the living word of God? It's the living logos of God. And he's asking us and telling us to eat the word. Eat the word. Consume the word. We have to eat what Jesus is telling us to eat. The second thing we learn from this passage of Scripture related to this is also that he tells us to fill ourselves with the Word of God. You need to fill yourself with the Word of God. And the first part of verse 3 from Ezekiel chapter 3 says this, Then he said to me, Son of man, eat this scroll I am giving you and fill your stomach with it. Fill your stomach with it. And let me say this, that... When you eat something, you take it in, your body breaks it down, and all of the nutrients from what you ate spreads throughout your entire body to all of your cells. Now think of it, what Jesus is saying when he's telling us to eat his flesh, to eat his words. He wants that word to get in 
and permeate throughout our entire being so that we become what the word says. Instead of having the word just in our minds, he wants it in and through us. He wants us to be consumed with the word. How many say amen? Amen. Colossians 3, 16 says it this way. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. We need to have the word of God in us if we're to live any kind of life that's to represent Jesus Christ. Let me tell you how to fill yourself with God's word. First of all, you got to read it. That's eating it. If you don't eat, you begin to die. If you don't eat the word, you will begin to die spiritually. Just like when you don't eat food, you will begin to die. It will take a little while, but you will eventually die from lack of eating. And in the same way, if you don't eat the word, if you don't read the word, you, you will begin to die spiritually. So you need to read it. That's step number one. There's a lot of uh, Christians who, whose Bibles are kind of dust, not kind of, they're dusty at home. You can go like this. And you need that mask on from that dust. We need to read and consume the word. How many say amen? amen. Then you need to study it. Not just read it. Reading is good, you need to read it, but then you got to study it. So that reading is eating it, studying is swallowing it. In 2 Timothy 2.15, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved so that you can divide the word of God rightly, so you can know what you're reading, so you can get it in and you can swallow it. How many say amen? Study it and also... We have a Bible study here every two weeks. We need more men of God on that Bible study and the women on on Friday nights. We need to study the Word of God. That's one way to do it. You need to study it on your own, but you need some help too. We can study it together. How many say amen? Then you need to meditate on it. You need to read it, study it, and meditate on it. Reading it, you eat it. Studying it, you swallow it, and meditating on it, you digest it. Psalm 119, 15 and 16 says this. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Do you make a practice of meditating on the word of God? Do you think about it at all? If you look back at What God was telling his people right from the very beginning. He would say, write these commands I give you, my word, on the door frames of your house. Speak about it on the road. Teach them to your children. In other words, think about it all day long. We're we're in a sad condition in this sinful nature of ours. We need to be in the word. We need to be meditating on the word and thinking about the word. You know, there's a a word of God for every situation. And and when you start living that, the word of God comes alive and you can apply the word of God to different situations. But if you don't read it, forget it. If you don't study it, you won't know it. And if you don't meditate on it, you won't digest it. You know what's a very good tool for meditating on the word of God is journaling. I don't know if any of you journal. You know, I... uh, For those of you that don't know, uh, twice a week I write a devotional on some scripture that, you know, God has spoken to me about. Let me tell you something, how that happens. Just to let you in that uh, this is not just for people who write devotionals. You can can, uh, uh, journal what God is speaking to you. If a verse pops out at you, you know, when I sit down to write a devotional, I don't know what I'm going to write. I take the verse that spoke to me, and I begin to write. And all of a sudden, God gives you insight into that word. I'm not special. He doesn't do that for me because I'm special. It's just because I'm taking time to study because I want to feed other people, but he's feeding me first. Right? That word is speaking to me. 
It's his word. It's not mine. I'm not writing anything of mine. It's God's word. Amen. I encourage you to take a verse and start writing what God is speaking to you about that verse. Amen. Then memorize it. I'm telling you how to fill yourself with God's word. Read it, study it, meditate on it, then memorize it. Psalm 119.11 says, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. You have trouble, are you struggling? Store up God's word in your heart. How do you do that? Don't, don't buy those little things, uh, those little kits. I've done that, you know, with the cards. And you try to, you know, because really... The, the, the verses, you have nothing to apply them to. I, I tried that. And, and you, you're good for a little while, but you have to keep practicing like every scripture. And if you stop for a couple of weeks, you forgot the ones you, you know which ones stick with you? The ones that God speaks to your heart. The ones that spoke into your situation. You'll never forget those. Remember, you remember those. But you need to read the word and study it and meditate on it so that you'll be able to Memorize those specific scriptures that God gave you in hard times or even in good times. And then finally, to fill yourself with the word of God, live by it. Live by it. Live by the word. 1 Peter 1.23 says, For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living Word of God. We need to live the word. You want to see your life take off? You want to see your life truly transformed? Live the word of God. Ask God to help you to live it. Amen? So we need to eat what Jesus gives us to eat, fill ourselves with God's word. Then we need to know that the word of God is sweet at all times. It is sweet at all times. The second part of verse 3 of chapter 3 of Ezekiel says, So I ate it, and it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. You know why that sticks out to me? He tasted the scroll that God gave him to eat, and he said it tasted as sweet as honey to my mouth. Now the word that he gave him was a corrective word. It was a word of warning to the people of God. It was a serious word, yet... It tasted sweet to the taste of Ezekiel. You know why that is? Because God's word is good all the time. He has promises. He has words of encouragement. And then he also has words of correction. And words of correction are good. They're good for us because they correct us from going in the wrong direction and possibly destroying ourselves or destroying others. Don't think that God's corrective word is not good. It's sweet. It is sweet. And we need to take in the whole counsel of God. Not just the ones that we can jump up and down because of the promises. Not just the encouraging ones, but the ones that correct us. we got to thank God that the word corrects us. Otherwise, we'll go off. Psalm 34, 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Timmy, if you would come. The word of God is sweet. But you know what? You have to acquire a spiritual taste for it. Because of our condition, our flesh rejects the word. At the beginning, if you have not gotten a taste for the word, your flesh will not want to read the word or study the word or digest the word by meditating on it. Your flesh doesn't want that. As a matter of fact, you might have to fight through for a while until you acquire that taste for it. You know, Some things that you taste, when you first taste them, it doesn't taste good. Like coffee. Some people taste coffee for the first time, and it tastes terrible. I don't know why they keep drinking it, 
but they drink it until they like it. I've never done that. I don't like it, and that's it. <laughs> but the Word of God, if you taste it and keep tasting it, you will learn that it's sweet as honey to the taste. And unlike coffee, which, well, maybe not so unlike coffee. You know, if you don't, people who are coffee drinkers, I understand, and you get hooked on it. When you don't have it, you get a headache. Wouldn't it be great if we didn't read the word and we got a headache? <laughs> that would be a good headache. <laughs> and it'll only go away if you read it. <laughs> we need to get hooked on the word. We need to get hooked on the word. How many say amen? And finally, let me close with this. We need to eat what Jesus gives us to eat so that we will be able to feed others. If we eat what Jesus gives us to eat, we will be able to feed others. Ezekiel 3 verse 4 says this, Then he said, Son of man, Go to the people of Israel and give them my messages. Obviously, this was after he ate the scroll that he was then able to go to the people. As a matter of fact, in the very first verse, he said, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat the scroll. Then go and speak to the people of Israel. There's people around us Starting with your own family, by the way, that need the word of God. Husbands, let me challenge you. Something that I've missed from Ephesians chapter 5, where the word of God is admonishing husbands and wives how to be with each other. It's a very, very challenging chapter for uh, husbands and wives. But as part of that, something that I missed for a long time was one of the things of the calls to husbands is to wash our wives with the water of the word and present her holy and blameless to God. That's one of the calls that we have. But think about that. It doesn't just stop with wives. You can wash your children with the water of the word. The, 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 the word cleanses. The word is an amazing uh, cleansing agent. And not only that, what about your friends? What about people that you love and care about? What about those that you work with? You know, when you first maybe quote a scripture or say something from the word of God, it might not go over that well. But the word, the Bible says, the word never comes back without effect. It never comes back void. In other words, the word, because it's the word of God, it has an effect. It will affect the person in one way or the other. They could wind up rejecting it at the end, but it's going to be a great struggle. They're going to have to wrestle through it. I'd rather have somebody wrestle with the word than never have a chance at all. How many say amen? Listen to Romans chapter 10, and then we're going to pray. Verses 14 and 15. How then, talking about people that don't know Christ, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent that it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news? But let me add something to that. How can you bring good news if you haven't first eaten the good news yourself? You can't feed anybody if you haven't eaten yourself. It's like they say on, you know, when you're on an airplane, and it seems a little selfish. It says if you're with someone or someone who, or children and you need that oxygen, put yours on first. 
and then help your children. Why is that? Because if you pass out while you're trying to help them, nobody gets helped and everybody is done for. So you need to eat the word first so that you will be able to feed others. You need to have the good news work in you, consumed through your whole body, so that now you're actually walking in the word and you're living the word, not just speaking it out of your mouth. It will have effect when it comes from a life that's living in the word. You know how powerful that is, someone telling you something, and they can't deny it because they see something about your life that's different. Your, your life is speaking something so that when the words of Jesus come out, they have a strong effect. Amen? And how many know this world needs the living word of God? This world needs the living word of God. And you and I have it. We need to be living it. We need to eat it. We need our, to fill ourselves with it. And we need to have that sweetness of the word spread everywhere we go. Amen. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, oh God, how we need you, Lord. How we need you. We love you and we need you, Lord Jesus. And God, how we need your word, oh God. Lord, not just the written word, the logos word, the living word, oh God. That this word would be lit up in our lives because we're consuming it, oh God. And it's becoming a part of every fiber of our being, oh God. Lord, it's transforming us more and more into the image of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, Lord, I pray that you would make us hungry for your word. God, as you give us to eat, that we would do like the prophet Ezekiel, that we would open up our mouth, oh, Lord God, and let you put that scroll, the scroll of your word in our mouth, that we might eat it and consume it, God, that it might be sweet to our taste, oh, Lord God, that we might digest it, oh, God, and, Lord, make it, Lord God, every part of us, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, how we need you. How we need you, Lord. How we need to be nourished by the logos of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are that word. You are that word, oh God. I pray, Father, that you would, Lord God, fill us with your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, oh God, so that, God, we could be effective for the kingdom of God. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Right now, whichever way you do this,